Want to know what it takes to live in London, one of the world's top cities? We'll definitely be covering that in this video, so make sure to stay tuned. Hi everyone, I'm Ugo Renze with Onyx Property Consultants and Keller Williams. I am a London-based property agent and I help my clients buy and sell property in London and enjoy living in this fabulous city. If you're new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because I put out weekly videos on everything London property related and things about getting to know and explore London as a city. In today's video, we're going to be talking about what it actually costs to live in London as a city. It's part of my Living in London series and there's other videos in this series so make sure to check them out. We'll have links in the description below. First, let's talk about salaries and housing. The average salary in London is about £34,000 per annum while the average house costs about £460,000 to purchase which means that it's about 13 times the average salary given the average housing cost. For the whole of the UK, this figure is at 7.77 times and you can see from the chart how that affordability gap has grown over the years. Most lenders typically won't lend more than 4.5 times salaries, so it suggests that London workers would need to come up with significant deposits to purchase a home or look to move outside of London, which is what many have had to do. If you decide to rent in London, you still might be challenged as well. Average rents in London are currently at $16.65 per month. Most lettings and tenant referencing services will want to make sure that your salary is at least 2.5 times annual rent. So with a monthly rent of £1,000, you would need to make at least £30,000 per annum. So again, you can see where the disconnect given that the average salaries are £34,000, which is why so many young professionals are having to share accommodations. Don't forget the other costs associated with housing, which also include utilities, broadband, TV license, council tax, etc. Obviously, what you pay for housing will also determine what your transport costs will be. This then leads to the next discussion, which is about transport costs. Again, transport costs in London are generally conceived to be high, but perhaps that's relative. Growing up in America, we're relying mostly on having to drive most places, and that then includes fuel costs and other maintenance costs of owning an actual car and insurance and those other things. The easiest way to explain is to actually look at London as far as the London tube map. Technically, the tube system has nine zones, but most of it is in zones one to six. Central London is in zone one and is the most expensive housing, but that's also where a lot of the employers exist. Zone two is the next ring around zone one, and zone three is a ring around zone two, and so on. So if you can't afford to live in zone one, you'll definitely need to consider commuting into zone one if that's where you work. For me, I think London is actually a very good value relative to its transport costs, but I do use the transport system quite a bit, so maybe I'm definitely maximizing the efficiency of my value of the cost. If you're going to commute via the tube, the overground or bus network, the most economical way to do it is to have an Oyster card or a monthly pass on your smartphone where you can tap in and tap out. As an example, a monthly Oyster card which allows you to travel between zone one and two is seven pounds per day and 134 pounds per month or 1404 per annum and that's actually recently just gone up with the start of the year. Now say for the sake of trying to save money on transport costs you decide to live further out to save money on housing. So you say if you live in zone 4 you'll need to commute into zone 1. It will cost you 10 pounds and 10 pence per day or 194 pounds per month or 2020 pounds per annum. If you can restrict your journey to say just buses or cycling, you'll definitely be able to save money on your transport costs. If you want to know more about your transport options, make sure to check out my video on the landed transport options. There's a link above and we'll also put one in the description box below. So what do you think of the cost of London housing and transport so far? And how does it compare to where you're moving from or where you live right now? Next up we should consider is the cost of food. I actually think the food cost in London is actually pretty reasonable and you have lots of food choices. Obviously, if you want to go out every day, that's going to be one consideration. But London is set up such that if you're in most zones um, and you're coming out of a transport system area such as the high street, you're going to have plenty of bodegas and grocery stores to pick up your groceries on a daily basis if you're um, able to make and prepare your food at home. At the premium level, you've got grocery stores such as Waitrose and Self 
Selfridges that have food halls and Harrods, and therefore you're gonna definitely be spending more to get the staples and the food items that you need. At the lower end, you've got places like Aldi and Little who are actually opening stores on the high streets these days. And then in the mid-range, you've got Sainsbury, Tesco, and M&S that definitely will have plenty of food options for you. Also, one of my favorite places to pick up things is Poundland. You'd definitely be surprised at the amount of things that that store offers and stocks on a regular basis. As one of my top tips, I mentioned the bodega, so that's definitely a place I would definitely go, and that's where I pick up my groceries on a daily basis, get everything I need to prepare my food, and, and can do that on a regular basis. It's especially helpful in London, where you have flats that are quite small, and you might have very small refrigerators, so you're not able to really buy things in bulk. So the bodegas or the local grocery stores and shops will definitely be able to stock what you need on a daily basis. For key staples, you may spend around five to six pounds on a pint of beer, two to three pounds on a cup of coffee. If you're going out for a decent meal with wine for a mid-range restaurant, you'll spend between 25 and 30 pounds, but on nicer restaurants with entrees or mains in the 25 to 30 range, you're likely to spend 50 to 60 pounds per person when you include wine and other um, and dessert. Now that we've covered the basics, let's talk about entertainment. For the average movie or cinema ticket, you're going to be paying between 13 and 17 pounds per ticket. I love going to museums and galleries, and one of the nice things about London is that most of them are actually free. However, you might have to pay for the exhibits, um, the special exhibits that come along. There's plenty of cultural things to do, so just make sure that you're just proactive about finding out what's happening on a regular basis. If you sign up for my monthly newsletter, we actually feature some top things to do around London on a regular basis. One of my favorite things to do is actually walking around central London or different neighborhoods because you'd be surprised at the things you can discover that's happening on a one-off basis um, on any given day or weekend. There's also activities at all different ranges and budgets. If you're a player theater to go, there'll be the high-end West End productions of Hamilton or The Lion King, but there are so many incredible off the West End, smaller um, theaters that have fantastic productions that are really worth checking out and discovering. In summary, London is definitely an expensive city because of its global appeal. It's a world-class city, it's a capital city, and therefore, compared to other global cities, it definitely can be pricey to live and work here. But it has so much appeal. I work with so many foreign clients looking to buy into London because of the world-class education systems, the cultural institutions, the rule of law, the ease of transport, and access to other global cities and um, travel on a regular basis. With that, it means that demand can be relatively high and locals might struggle to make ends meet on a regular basis, but it doesn't mean that you can't find ways to enjoy London on an every kind of budget that there is. So I hope that this video has given you some options on things to consider and how to enjoy London at all different price ranges. Drop me a message if you found this video helpful, if you have any special tips on cultural things you like to do to enjoy London on a budget. And if you like this video, make sure to like it and give me a thumbs up on the icon. If you want to know more about London and all the fantastic things to consider, whether it's culture or education or schools or neighborhoods, make sure to download my free relocation guide to London. It's got tips on everything from education, museums, culture, things to do, and definitely will give you some great ideas and things and how to enjoy London. Don't forget to watch my other videos in the Living in London series, which will give you top tips on learning London, exploring London, and making the most to enjoy this city. City. So that's Ugo Renze with Onyx Property Consultants and Keller Williams. Bye for now.